just so we can be sure to have enough for guys. Wait! Wait! Just a moment. Lower your weapons. I said lower your weapons! You have much to answer for, General. And what of you, my friend? A year ago I heard stories of your death, at the hands of a child, no less. Now here you stand, not only alive, but leading the very creatures we've been charged to destroy! You've been charged to destroy, not me. What happened to you, Cassius? Cassius? Do you not remember your own name? What have those damned moonbloods done to you? What did you call me? Cassius! That's who you are! Don't listen to him! You're Jin now! Remember that! I... You're remembering now, aren't you? Together nothing stood in our way. We shaped this world together. And together, we can finish what we started. You order the deaths of countless people, countless Moonbloods, Moonblood sympathizers, anyone that stood in your way! Yes, and you carried them out. Lower your blade, old friend. First we destroy these Moonbloods once and for all. Then I can help rid you of these fantasies that have spoiled your mind. Just listen to me. Cassius was my name. That doesn't matter. It's all that matters! All those people I killed, fidgets. How could I possibly redeem myself in a mere few days? You cannot, Dust. This was never about redeeming Cassius. But then, you are not Cassius. But I share his form, his very soul. That doesn't matter! Why do you keep saying that? Because you're not just Cassius! Jin didn't kill those people. Jin saved Aurora and Mudpot Village. Jin stopped Fuse, saved Lady Tethys, and now he's the only thing standing against General Gaius. Cassius would destroy the Moonbloods. But Jin, he would protect them. No, Fidget. You're wrong. Jin didn't do any of those things. Then you finally come to your senses. Jin is dead, as is Cassius. Their souls now live within me. Constantly reliving that fateful day, forever in battle, forever at odds. But as long as I live, I still have a choice. Then what are you? I am Justice Incarnate, brought to this world by forces beyond your comprehension. A cleansing storm to sweep across the land and purge it of your foul presence. I am Dust, and your campaign ends here now. Throw down your weapons and surrender, or you will face an enemy unlike any this world has ever seen. Cassius, please, don't do this. You know you cannot win. Let's end this. <laughs> Good start. Alright, let's kill his minions. Yeah, he's got range. Really? <laughs> what shitty design is this? <laughs> I 
I love, I love games that give bosses random immunity. Yeah, unfortunately, parts of this fight kind of feel like bullshit. Because he can just block constantly. You cannot win, Cassius. You never could beat me. Stop calling me Cassius! There was a time when you stood by my side. We were allies once. Not anymore, General. I'm not your ally, and I'm not your friend. Now raise your blade or drop it. You never could scare me either, Cassius. Very well. To the death! That gunship go. Or use that to like knock him on his ass. Yeah, I don't know. If if I could change one thing about this game it would be to disconnect dodging from it'd be to disconnect dodging from um it would be to disconnect dodging from magic
Okay. Turn through all that. Don't you remember anything, Cassius? Why would you draw your blade against your fellow soldiers? Why would you draw your blade against me? You're destroying this world, Gaius. You and your soldiers cannot be allowed to continue your campaign. This world belongs to the strong, Cassius. It belongs to us. Don't you remember your duty? Don't you remember your friends? I remember everything. And it changes nothing! Are you fucking serious? <laughs> My god, this is awful. <laughs> Yeah, his ability to just mask. So his ability to parry you constantly feels like complete horseshit. <clears throat> it's like they were probably going for like this. Oh, he's such a great swordsman thing, but but then he can literally like parry you right back into his own attacks. Like, just look at this shit. If this looks like a good game design to you, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> okay, we're gonna eat that. Yeah, I don't think there was actually anything I could do there. <sighs> yeah. Round four now? This is where it ends, Gaius!
What the fuck? Okay, whatever. I don't care. I just want this to be over. Like, this last stage has legitimately ruined this game. So, I just want this shit over. <laughs> also, rule of thirds, my dude. Not rule of fourths. Again, it's this shit again, where, like, he blocks you into his own attacks, like... For the player to do that kind of stuff, that works fine. If it's happening because of the enemy, that doesn't really work. Yeah, his, his auto-blocking mixed with knocking into his own attacks is probably the worst entire part about this fight.
Through the actions of our Sen Mithrarin dust, the Moonblood race is finally free. We will never forget his sacrifice or the deeds that saved our very world. We shall always remember what happened here. Dust's sacrifice will allow the Moonblood race to rise again, to rebuild our glorious civilization and live peacefully among the races of this world. Though it may appear that dust has fallen here today, a force of good is not so easily extinguished. Sen Mithrarin was born of dust, a current of winds of change, a harbinger of storms yet to come. Yep, so Dean Dudrill made this game by himself as far as more. He had some other people, uh, a few other people, who did other things. So like music, that was by Haberduck, and sound works. <clears throat> but yeah, my understanding is that the majority of the design of the artwork of everything was done by Dean Doodle. Doodle. Was it Doodle? Doodrill. Yeah, Alex Kane helped with some of the writing. Some to a lot. <laughs> but yeah, for the most part, it's one, it was one guy. Which is crazy. It looks like Dean didn't... Did he voice act anyone? I'm guessing not. Usually what... Uh, and what indie game designers will like to do is uh, voice act at least one of the characters in their game. Sometimes it's an important one, sometimes it's not. But yeah, okay, about the game. So Act 1, good, solid. Act Chapter 2... I think it was darkness that was downstairs. That's when we started getting the first hints of one of the game's not so great mechanics being a requirement, which was the whole parry system. Um, so there's that one. The act three, four, and five seemed okay. Okay, nothing seems to stand out to me as problematic with those. And then with six, like, almost all the enemies could parry you for some god-awful reason. <laughs> Dearest Elizabeth. Um, yeah. So, yeah, chapter six against the soldiers, they could all parry you. That just felt like bullshit. There's too much on screen. I get the whole idea of wanting to make it look like this big epic battle that, you know, there's all these people with you. But at the end of the day, that works great as background dressing. So, like, you might have a different plane where there are a lot of, say, Moonbloods and a lot of soldiers and they're all fighting each other in the background, not obscuring dust. Or, if you do have them in there, the enemies all have priority and Dust has priority. They're all forward, and all the Moonbloods are in the background. Something like that could work. Um, I don't know if they had that level of level of uh, being able to control things in Dust and Elysian Tale. Uh, these are most likely things that people already brought up. The game's like 10, 12 years old. So... <laughs> <laughs> the game's old. <coughs> uh, 
But yeah, it's pretty good at what it does. That that last bit was just utter, utter horseshit in, in so many ways. Um, the boss fight, they should have found a different way to make the boss challenging, aside from just he can randomly parry you, or he has a high chance to parry you. Like, that kind of stuff can work in, like, tabletop RPGs, but in an action RPG that's built around combos and, you know, like, this game is sort of like DMC, Don't May Cry, and, like, you're going for the high combo in that it's really fluid movement, but now you have really fluid movement with a boss who throws, shoots projectile, timed explosive projectiles, back where you were and then compare you back into those projectiles so that's not good uh, if we compare cassius to something like um not hollow knight um salt and sanctuary but this parry mechanic didn't exist in salt and sanctuary if i remember correctly i think there was a parry mechanic but not a active attack parry mechanic and so, in that one, none of the bosses had the ability to parry you, if I remember correctly. They were kind of just big HP sponges. The game was also designed around the idea that you'd be able to attack enemies through various means. So you could be a caster in that game, you could be melee, you could be use ranged, you could use poison. I've done a few cheese runs of that game. But here it's... So think about the main mechanic of dust. You attack and you use dust storm and you use magic. Those are the ways that you attack the enemy. One, two, three. So Gaius is is incredibly good at stopping you from using one and potentially two. Because I think he can parry you out of dust storm. But he's but he's completely vulnerable to three. To the magic. Now the problem that comes up all the time is that because melee is so emphasized in this game it's potentially really easy to get stuck on that boss pretty sure many people who played the game might have well also i mean gaius was a four stage boss uh it, it's called the rule of threes for a reason uh <laughs> so rule of threes so basically in game design, you will do something three times in a lot of Dust Elysian Tale. There were many puzzles that requires you to do, like, destroy three different pillars so you can move forward, or do three different things so you can progress, something like that. Uh, I would have really liked for things to be threes or sixes or nines. We had six sheep, so that works, but we had four bolt fingers. Uh, we, we had, like, this weird number of other items for you to collect. Granted, you could just go buy them. So it's not really a problem. Uh, I would have really liked some sort of accessory that gave you the ability to just ignore enemy parries. That, though, then again, that would have just completely broken cast the Cassius fight. Because <clears throat> my assumption here is that the, is that Doodrill was making Gaius into the main boss fight and he wanted it to be this big epic fight and when Gaius didn't have like infinite parry chance didn't have like an 80% parry chance or something there was like the problem was that he just felt like a slightly stronger enemy I guess that had magic <clears throat> the so what I suspect happened was that was added just to try and make the boss fight harder without adding a bunch of stuff to it. Make it like, so he didn't make it into a commander horde sort of boss fight. Those almost always suck. And how Dust's abilities work is because he can just spam the battlefield with magic and hit the entire battlefield, you know, those hordes don't really last very long. Unless, of course, they can always just parry you, at which point, <laughs> you know, having too many of them just makes the fight bullshit. So, I suspect that giving Gaius all that parry potential was just the least shitty option for that boss fight. 
But again, it was also a four-stage boss fight. It should have been three-stage. Like, he should not have had four stages in there. Should have been talk, fight, and main one, fight in second one, skip the third, go straight to the fourth, and have it there. <laughs> That's what they really should have done. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, if I had to say anything about it, it would be the first several chapters are pretty good. Chapter, you know, chapter two, darkness with the trolls that you can only attack in a very specific way. I always hate boss mechanics. That, I always hate mechanics that do that crap where it's like, oh, you have to fight this enemy in this hyper specific, only this way sort of way. Yeah, it doesn't really work. So, and plus, I mean, like there, there would definitely be people who would just skip all the trolls that they possibly could, or find some sort of way to cheese them, because some people just are really bad at timing. <laughs> people are just really, really, really bad at timing. <laughs> like the other people that you tell in Devil May Cry, I, I think it was the latest one. If you time your attack to hit an enemy as the enemy is swinging their attack, you will, I think, one-shot them. Or do extreme damage to them and stun them, that kind of thing, so you can get off a big combo and it doesn't break your combo. So, but yeah, for designed by one person, this is pretty damn good. It's pretty damn solid. Plus, back then, like 20... 12-ish, I think is when this game came out. Like, this was one of those very few, like, furry games. There were there were a handful, but they were like flash games. There weren't a whole lot that were like actual full-on games. It would take years and years for more and more of those to start coming out. <laughs> <laughs> What's odd is that. <clears throat> For the most part, a lot of them, <clears throat> some of the more successful and well-known ones, I don't know, <coughs> I don't even know if they're made by furries. Uh, you had <coughs> Ori in the Blind, Ori in the Blind Forest. You had Ori in the Blind Forest. You had, and I really hope that hadn't been going off like the entire time. I just never noticed it. Really hope this one. <laughs> oh no, no, it's probably okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there's like Ori in the Blind Forest, which was incredibly good. If you haven't played Ori, go and play it. There were a lot of other games that have a whole lot of combat mechanics in them. Ori's combat mechanics are, at least Blind Forest's combat mechanics, are very limited. You're pretty much reliant on Sen to do all the attacking for you, and you don't have to aim anything. And then Ori and the Will of the Wisps, I think Ori becomes more of a Metroidvania character where she, him, they, it, I, I don't know what Ori is. I, I think it's, if I remember correctly, Ori is supposed to be a literal genderless <laughs> creature. <laughs> uh, if, to my understanding, it's, it's like like a spirit that doesn't necessarily reproduce, but who knows? They might, I haven't played Will and the Wisp, so they might refer to Ori as she or he or they. That's an entire argument that <laughs> is beyond the scope of this video. <laughs> um, just so we can be clear, trans rights are human rights. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so, yeah, Dust of Lysian Tale. It's, it's, it's a good game. It's last chapter really needs a mod to, like, fix it. And, and I, I do say that in, like, the least mean sort of way. It It's one of those things where it feels like the developer for the last chapter was kind of just like, okay, how do I... How do I make this last chapter really big? How do I make it really cool? How do I make it seem? How do I make it pop? And his solution to make it pop, to make it all those things, kind of backfired to an extent. But, you know, it is what it is. 
Um, all right. Well, there's that hot take. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the guy's fight was bad for different reasons. Boss fights. So, <clears throat> I don't think there was a boss fight for chapter one. Was there? No, there was. It was Fuse. Fuse was an okay boss fight. He didn't have any, like, weird bullshit in his combat arena to to make it worse, make it bad for the player. He had a lower platform and an upper platform. The bridge up top, I think. All in all, it worked okay. Uh, didn't really have any major problems with that one. <clears throat> Chapter 2's boss fight, Water Lady, there were too many platforms for the player to effectively have their combo uh, interrupted by, which created the problem. What they could have done there is, when they're doing their combos, they're doing their air combo, swipe, 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 up for, you know, grab, air grab, they could have made it so that the air combo kept priority even if your feet hit the ground so it would look kind of like it would look kind of funky but like you start an air combo and then your feet hit the ground to hit they hit the base of a, they hit a platform but when you keep attacking he keeps continuing to do the air combo and then can throw the enemy on the ground that could work uh and so it doesn't interrupt it it, it would look funky, but I think it would be a way to not interrupt that and make it to where you can still have those platforms that let you jump all the way around the map in a big hexagon, while at the same time not inconveniencing the player just with how you've laid out your boss arena. <laughs> so there's that one. Um, what was the boss of chapter three? I don't think there was a boss to chapter three. Wait, there was. It was Ghostman. That fight worked just fine. That fight was absolutely fine. I have no complaints about that fight. None that I can think of. Um, all of them should have been like as good as that one. Um, everything was telegraphed. Everything was dodgeable. He had minions that would give you soul to use your magic with. Just think about the combat system in Dust. Again, melee attacks, Dust Storm, magic. That's Dust's combat system. You have dodging, you have parrying, but... You, you know, those are fine, but Dust, unless the entail is at its best, when it's just free form combat. Because it doesn't have really deep combos, like it has swipe swipe and then big swipe big swipe kick aoe but the aoe on the like on the stump isn't huge as far as i can tell so you know you'll most likely be doing attack knock into the air combo and then dust storm with magic and then doing that again that's most likely what you will be using which, if the game was built entirely around you doing that, that would have been fantastic. Instead, the game kind of became, yeah, as it went on, it moved away from that, at least, especially in the last chapter. Okay, so the third boss fight with Ghostman, that worked out great. Had the easy minions to get spirit from, you could spam magic. You could attack Ghostman. You could death storm Ghostman, dodge out of his attacks, and everything worked. All the boss fights should have been like that. <laughs> to be honest, they all should have been like that. Not not that exact fight, but they all should have had the ability to to fight it like that, and that would have been fun. Um, chapter four. I don't think Chapter 4 had a boss fight. They were like, yeah, I, I, I don't count fighting a normal enemy. 
<clears throat> one of them at a time, and then three of them at a time as a boss fight. Uh, especially because they just become common enemies later. So the boss fight of chapter four was more just platforming. And then it led to exposition, which is fun. <laughs> the boss fight. Exposition. Um, chapter five? What was chapter five? Is that where we fought, guys? If it isn't, then it's just, it was so unremarkable that, like, we completely forgot about it. Okay, then we have Gaius's area. I guess that's chapter five. I guess. And so with that one, I already talked about it. The boss fight was absolute horseshit. Um, <clears throat> it felt bad in that boss fight. Um, getting to the boss fight, the final area felt like horseshit because all the enemies could parry you. So this led to like some enemies just being really difficult because they just parried more often and they use certain attacks you know randomly compared to their compared to their peers um like they'll parry you then they'll do a thrust and so you have to either dodge or parry them immediately you can't do anything else or you'll just get hit or maybe you can't really do anything else maybe dodging will help you <clears throat> but yeah just some of the enemies, it, it, it was one of those things where, like, it seemed inconsistently like bullshit. <laughs> inconsistently like bullshit. Like, that's a, that's an interesting way to put it. Um, but it, from a solo dev, it's okay. You know, it is what it is. Um, and I think that's it. The guy's boss fight was the worst boss fight in the game. Hands down the worst boss fight in the game. It overstayed its welcome way too long. And I think that's about it. So what about the story of Dust? <clears throat> what about the story of the game? So... The story's fun. It tries to do a, what's called a hub and spoke system to an extent. So hub and spoke is where you have a central hub, like Firelink Shrine or your main area in Wake 2? Where, Hexen 2? Hexen 1? Where basic, basically it's the central area where you will meet all the NPCs who will give you quests. And then from there, you will go out into various areas to either complete quests or create a series of puzzles that let you then progress forward. In this case, it is you complete a bunch of quests and a bunch of puzzles in Aurora, which open up the way to Mudpot. You, you finish a lot of quests and puzzles in Mudpot, which allows you to progress into the graveyard. You complete a lot of quests and puzzles in the graveyard. That one sort of does it to yeah actually all of them many of them do actually so you have the wheel you have the 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 hub aurora spokes all the other areas aurora is probably like the best version of this then you have mud pot which is the hub and then the spokes are getting all of the three whatevers <laughs> whatever they were and then fighting the boss um, that opens up the mansion, the hub is talking to the lady, the spokes are the various mansions, so you can go do the boss fight and move into the mountains. And once you get to the mountains, the design falls away entirely. Um, there, there wasn't a hub in the mountains that I, that I remember. It was kind of just a long, somewhat linear path, maybe it had some branching paths to it. Like, it was, alright, go get item that lets you progress. You can now progress. Congratulations. You did it. Um, I, I don't know if I would call that hub 
scope design because there was, wasn't a central hub. Um, then you have the Moonblood Encampment. I don't know if I would call the Moonblood Encampment hub spoke. You literally went off into... It was more of a branching linear path. The linear path, and you had like a few branches that you had to do to keep moving on the linear path. That's not hub spoke. Um... But I think that's it. If you look at uh, Dark Souls 2, Majula is a hub, and going on, and the spoke would be going off to the various locations to Lordaeron. It's not Lordron, It's whatever it's called. Uh, making your way that direction into the actual starter area. Heights Tower of Flame, Catacombs, and I think there was a fourth one. But I think you had to unlock the fourth one by going to Hides first. And so this would allow you to... This served as your central hub that everything else connected to. If I remember correctly, everything in the game was sort of connected to Majula. Except for the, like, the very last parts, but... To get to those last parts, you had to basically completely fulfill the hub of Majula, and then that lets you move into the last part of the game. Which, if I remember correctly, is fairly linear. So... Yeah. But alright, I think that's it. We, we won't be playing Dustin. <laughs> we won't be... Uh, going for the hardcore option. <laughs> now, we won't be doing that. <laughs> but, you know, good game. If you are not new to games like this, I recommend you probably just play on casual. Um, you'll probably... There's a penalty for death? Okay. Um... I don't know, maybe, like, the smarter enemies means they parry more? I don't know. I'm guessing with casual, if you die, you just get back up. Like, you have infinite revival stones or something like that. That'd be, that would be interesting. Um, maybe you do a level 1 run on casual or something. But, yeah. Um, yeah, we, this will be the only video we make, uh, the only series we make on Undust. There's not really a lot you can do to mix things up with this game. Unfortunately, like, you can't do the whole only sword upgrades or only magic upgrades, or only defense, or... I guess you could do a base level run where you upgrade nothing. Oh man, Cassius would probably take like an hour. I mean, uh, Gaius would probably take an hour just to just to kill him in that version. So, yeah, it is what it is. But all right, I think that'll be it for us, guys. Dust Lucian Tale. If you like what you saw here, I recommend you pick it up. It should be dirt cheap on Steam by now. And yeah, enjoy. It's a good game for a single man developer. Except for the last chapter. That one's horseshit. But you'll get through it. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone.